In the first module, we looked at how a current carrying conductor generates a magnetic field and how the field can be strengthened by winding the conductor into a coil. In this module, we will explore the relationship between current, magnetism and movement further to create a working motor. When a conductor moves in a magnetic field that runs perpendicular to the movement, a voltage or electromotive force is induced in the conductor. The size of the voltage is proportional to the speed of movement, the magnetic flux density and the length of the conductor. On the flip side of this, if we apply a voltage to the conductor in the same perpendicular magnetic field, a force will be applied to the conductor and it will move. This can be remembered using Fleming's left-hand rule, named after the 19th century scientist. If you hold your left hand like this, with the first finger pointing in the direction of the magnetic field, the second finger in the direction of the current flow, the thumb will point in the direction of the motion. So, if we have a stationary magnetic field and two conductors each with the current flowing in opposite directions, one will be pulled up and the other one down. Now, these two conductors can be joined to form a loop or closed circuit. When this happens, the two opposing forces cause the loop to rotate, but only until the loop is perpendicular to the field. To make the loop or rotor turn indefinitely in the static field or stator, we need to keep changing the direction of the current flow, and we achieve this with a device called a commutator. In a two-pole direct current or DC motor such as this, the commutator is simply a split ring that reverses the current through the brushes every half turn. Congratulations, you have made a DC electric motor. In the next module, we will see how these principles can also apply to alternating current and how an AC motor works.